Okay, so let's continue with the basically understanding of functions. We've uh, hopefully you've gone over the video on um, the motivation behind where functions are used and what they're all about. Uh, not necessarily the mathematical uh, side of it, as in the how to calculate or compute functions, but just understand them. So here's a, this is the second one in line uh, of the first one because if you understand that this this builds on to the same concept. Once again, in in that. Uh, we've already uh, considered a function as an input output system okay so something that takes input and gives us back output and I'm gonna start putting an F here uh, to indicate that it's a function so you start familiarizing yourself with these two ideas are the same input output systems okay and basic input output systems and functions same concept same idea you need to get that and start reprogramming yourself to understand functions in that manner if you're in a if you're at university and you've never heard this or understood the concept this way please reprogram yourself now okay so let's uh, have a look at this so input and output now if we think of uh, if we think about if you think about any system obviously if it's going to take input and we're going to produce output you can't put everything into you know a, a, a particular function or a particular system. I mean, it depends on the system, doesn't it? What kind of input is valid and what kind of input is invalid? And this, the basic idea of the the basic idea gives rise to the question. I mean, okay, so I've got a system and it's going to take input. What is valid input? And therefore, what it produces is valid output and we call this input the domain and the output the range right let me let me give you an analogy going back to the same blender analogy that i had so remember this blender we were using this to describe a function as an input output function so uh, input output uh, system so here's that blender again and let me put it here for you now if you remember we were it this blender takes input valid input okay and and of course it gives us output let me ask you a question what do you see here in this picture it's a nice picture actually but anyway what you see are stones rocks right do you think i can put these into the blender and if i and if you think i can what do you think is going to happen to the blender when i turn it on yeah it could be a lot of fun to hurt yourself or hurt yourself or to uh, break up the blender I mean you uh, completely um, ex it'll completely explode if you try to put this in because usually they're made of either glass or plastic and if you put this in it'll ruin the blades and it'll most likely break the actual um, what's it called uh, this uh, this glass part of it anyway that's not the point the point is this can this be valid input into a blender and of course you should say no this is not valid input okay so that means this is not valid input that can be put into the blender. That's my point. You see, if we think of the blender as an input-output system, not everything could be put in the blender, okay? You can't put stones in there. Okay, here's another item. How about this pen that you see lying here? Okay, can I take this, can I take this pen and put it into the blender? Is it valid input? And of course, you're going to say, no, it's not valid input either. So you can't put this in the, into the blender. So then what the hell can I put into the blender? You're going to say, you, okay, so, right. Obviously, that's a silly question. But anyway, the thing is, we put edible items into the blender. The blender has a, uh, you know, we, sub, we cut down, the, uh, not everything in the world can be put into the blender. Only edible food items can be put into the blenders things that we can eat because we use the blender to prepare food or some kind of drink or whatever it is but it's something that we eat or drink so let me bring that picture before that i had here is something we can put into the blender which is all these different fruits but of course we have to cut them up we can't put them raw into it we you know we have to cut them up mash them up a little bit and then put them into the blender right but reasonably valid input we can use this as input to the blender more okay this could also be okay this could also be valid input into the blender and there are many many other things that you could use that are valid input to the blender but but the, the point i'm trying to make okay uh the point i'm trying to make is that what you can put into the blender is basically 
Okay, and that's what it produces. Mm, yummy. Anyway, so um, the, what I'm trying to say is that it does raise a question. Everything cannot be put into a system. It has to have, most systems will have a limited set of objects that could be put, uh, that would be considered as input to the system, and then they produce their valid output. Okay, so that gives rise to the concept of the domain. So this is the domain of this is the domain of this function okay whatever's valid input is called the domain of the function okay here's your function and it takes this this is the domain of the function all of this here is the domain of the function and here is the range of the function now a blender usually produces i mean a blender doesn't produce um you know uh it it, it won't produce like a roast chicken right what it's going to produce are are mostly uh, liquid form or uh, really thick. I, the liquid it, it'll be in liquid or mashed form. Okay, so it could be a sauce or something, but it's going to be something that is not not a solid. Okay, it's not a solid. It's not a gas. Usually, it produces some kind of thick liquid. Doesn't. But anyway, I don't want to get too uh, bogged down into what a blender does and so on. But the important thing I hope you understand is that what it produces isn't everything either. It produces a subset of what is existing in this world. And that is a very small subset. And that's called the range, okay? It's called the range of the function. It's what it validly produces, okay? So now I'm gonna give you a quick, ex a, a, an, actually, an actual mathematical example of domain and range. So just bear with me for a second. Uh, so suppose that we had a function f of x equals x squared for the sake of argument. Now, any what can we what numbers can be squared? Well, every number in the world can be squared. No matter what the number is, we can always square it. So, uh, negative numbers, positive numbers. So minus one, minus two point three, plus seven point six six two, one thousand. 500, 5056, and so on and so forth. Okay, lots and lots of numbers can be put into this. Okay, so that means the valid, the domain of this function. So what is the domain? Well, the domain is everything, all numbers. Okay, it's all numbers. And what does that mean? Formally, it means that x, okay, belongs to minus infinity, to plus infinity. There's a little bit of math for you, okay? Every single possible number in existence can be fed to this function. So it can take on its valid input, its domain is all numbers, okay, all numbers. So x could be anything between minus infinity and positive infinity. Another way to say that is x belongs to the set of all real numbers, okay, which includes positive, negative, all types of real numbers, okay? Now here's the other thing, other side. Let's look at the other side. What output does a does this function produce? Well, when I put a negative number into it, when I put minus two into it, what is f of minus two? Well, it's equal to four, isn't it? Okay, so it's equal to four. If I put f of minus seven, I get 49. What's happening here? It seems to be producing only positive numbers. If I put in f of 2, which is a positive number, still produces 4. If I put in 3, it produces 9, and so on and so forth, right? Which means, which means that the range of this function are all positive numbers. Could be any number, but it has to be positive. Doesn't, it will never produce a negative number, okay? So that means the range, the range of this function is r positive. Or, if you like this notation, I've excluded, of course, the negative terms, minus infinity, uh, but zero up to plus infinity. So that's the range of this function. Okay, hope that helps. Thank you.